Nature, 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 nature. Hey, today we're gonna unpack my song Airborne in depth. I figured I spent enough time inside making this song, so we're in nature today. Let's jump in. So I've got my logic session here, which uh, as you can see is not organized at all. So this song off of the new EP is one of my favorites because it's a great mix of technical and lighthearted. And we kind of start to tease that a little bit in the in this intro here. Consistent with the Prague tradition, I can't just start the song. I have to have an extended little synth intro that tells you what the song is before we actually start the song. What we have happening is just a whole lot of synth. For the most part, all the synths I'm using across the album are uh, the Prince. And the Prince is fun because it just has a bunch of like really, really weird presets. Like almost none of them sound good on their own, but all of them sound good when paired with another synth or a guitar. Uh, the other synth that I'm using almost exclusively um, is the Diva. I don't really know synths all that well, uh, especially not analog synths. So this was a fun plugin to get just to kind of make me feel like I did. My entire MO is just stack as many layers of the same thing, but slightly differently as you can, and let Adam Bentley sort it out. And, uh, you know, it's worked out pretty well so far. So we've got some flutes, we got some strings. Honestly, I don't even remember what's all in here. And the, half of this stuff doesn't even come back in the song. It's just for the intro. So there we've got kind of the motif of the song. This is also uh, a good time to talk about vocals. So like, I'm an instrumental kind of project, but I found that there's something about the human voice that's just like really easy to connect to, imagine. In this case, uh, me and my wife, Lindsay, laid down some um, vocal beds and we use Lindsay as sort of the main proponent for that melody that comes back later in the song. So you've got Lindsay there, and then you've got this like crescendo vocal thing that I'm doing. Very subtle, and I'm not a singer, but it is nice to have something in the song that is definitively your own. It's that fingerprint that only you have that no one can match exactly the same way. So I figure I ain't no singer, but I'll stick it in there anyway. Let's go on. Stop it there. Uh, this is sort of the main riff of the song. This riff is sort of what gave me the title Airborne because it feels like I'm soaring up and down and around through the clouds. Time signature wise, we're in 5-8. It kind of sounds like quintuplets, like a quintuplet shuffle, but, and that would be true if there wasn't just a measure of 6-8 in here because that sort of forces an eighth note structure if you're adding just one more. You have this arpeggiating guitar thing, uh, the guitars alone sound like this. Getting that clean is pretty difficult actually, or, you know, maybe, maybe a better guitar player than me can make it happen, but I found it pretty difficult to get that riff to stick out in the mix too, because of all of the synths that I'm adding under it. So to kind of have a little bit of extra pokiness and brightness, I uh, duplicated it and put it on, uh, I think it's an Abbasi, oh no, it's a Tim Henson piezo simulator, which sounds like this. Which kind of just adds this little bit of like acoustic-y brightness. We've also got Joe Calderon on bass here, who absolutely crushed it. We've got Kendall on the drums, who crushed it equally as much. We have a lot of drum tracks here. I'm gonna let Kendall kind of break those down in a separate video. Um, don't wanna steal his thunder. So 
So we've got that sort of vocal bed coming back. <laughs> Barely audible, but you definitely notice if it's taken away. I also have this uh, little pokey uh, Glock sort of synth thing happening. I kind of call it my cliche Pliny synth. You hear that one a lot in my songs. Oh, in case anyone's curious, this is what the click sounds like. This, so this is how we're counting it. In general, I really enjoy keeping some amount of imperfection in songs. I think a lot of people do this. I think it's a good thing to do because humans are imperfect and weird. When Lindsay was recording vocals, there's a moment where she just like cracks up. I probably was trying to mess with her while she was recording. And I decided to leave that in the song. It just, it's easily missed, but once you pick up on it, it just like is impossible not to smile when you hear it. So here in the rhythm section, we're just like driving on the one. Then we just start displacing that a little bit every once in a while, just to kind of throw you off. This is definitely the hardest part of the song, especially in a second. So here you start modulating over a dotted eighth. You have this sort of like tr almost triplet feel. But the rhythm section, uh, like bass and rhythm guitar are still just coming on that one. And really the only thing that's changing is the drums. It's a very confusing section if you don't know where the one is. Cool, so now we start to get into this sort of like lo-fi bridge thing that takes up a, a pretty good chunk of the song, um, at least until sort of the end. So uh, let's see what we've got going here. What am I using for this? I have plenty, of course. This is using his Camino uh, preset that he came out with. It makes good use of the, the chorus and the delay. It's actually just a great, great lo-fi. It's the only thing that I've got going on for this sound. I've got this uh, electric piano sort of doubling it. Um, and then, I haven't talked about this yet, but I, uh, at some point through recording, bought a Hologram Electronics Microcosm, and I use that thing to death. Uh, so what I would do is I would just record a part, or a synth or something, and just run it through the Microcosm and re-record it back in. It's cool because that's a pedal that there's no way to predict what it does. It just gives you stuff, and a lot of it is just really interesting textures and ambient soundscapes that would be really difficult to recreate otherwise. So this is a good example. I took that lo-fi guitar line that I'm sort of playing, ran it through the microcosm, and uh, this is what it gave me. So really subtle, um, but you can sort of hear like it's pitching things up and down, it's creating reverbs. I have it sort of panning from side to side to create some width. If you even just look at the list of tracks, the amount of times you just see microcosmed guitar, microcosmed synth, uh, is a lot. Not a lot 
lot to say about that whole section. It's just sort of there for the vibes. So then we start to get into this like refrain bridge section. <laughs> A lot of synths here. Um, actually, not a lot, I guess. It's just these three. Yeah, it's just the Prince, the Diva, and electric piano. Uh, and then I've just got some like crazy ambient chords. I think that's running through, that's running through the Rabia. So interesting thing about this this entire section is it used to be this like very genty uh, which is still kind of there but it was like very much like low tune guitars we're doing a mashuga thing and there's something missing with it i thought it was maybe it just needs a solo maybe it needs a lead line and i wrestled with it for the better part of a year and eventually i was just like you know what why am I trying to do a Meshuggah thing? Like, that is not what I do. Not even close. We had already recorded drums by that point, so I couldn't exactly cut the section or modify it in any major way. So I opted for just sort of putting these, like, really glistening chords over it and just like a bed of synths and arpeggiating over those chords, and I'm so much happier with how it came out. It's like a lot lighter, more puffy, uh, but still has that kind of, like, edge and still reuses the, like, does that we do on the drums and the bass line I think is a lot cooler all around just better so we're kind of doing that typical 5-4 dut 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 that you know it's basically a requirement if you're writing a song in five you know have to do some kind of variation of it so we did the other thing that you're required to do if you're writing a song in 5-4 hi Mark hey, is it okay if I, mow? I mean maybe 15 minutes oh, yes. all right so we did the other thing that you're supposed to do if you're writing a song in 5-4 and do the syncopated da ga da 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 ga da da Here we're just adding a lot more synths. Just kind of doubling what that guitar is doing. Yep, that's how it goes. We're bringing back the line we just heard from over here. But way bigger, way heavier, and way cooler. This is one of those things where we're tesseracting a bit. Like, I feel the song in five, Kendall's feeling it in four with like a backbeat over it, and who knows what Joe and Harry are doing. I am a big fan of the way that the rhythm guitar turned out for this one. I, uh bought a seven string, started writing this song, sold the seven string, couldn't finish the song, bought another one, sold it, borrowed Harry's eight string, finished it, gave him back the eight string, bought another seven string, sold it, and now I'm in the market for a seven string. So if anybody has any uh, seven string recommendations, let me know, but be warned that I might just end up selling it. Got to do the key change. It just adds this little extra lift before the ending of the song that just uh, is pretty needed by this point. Yeah. 
this is the same line referenced earlier in the song through some of the synths and also some of the vocals. This section is a lot of fun just because we're still doing the like 5-8 with the 6-8 thing thrown in, but just the accents. So instead of going dicka 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 we're just going dunka dunka. It finally just like we're giving ourselves permission to just like have fun, lay back, just play the song. It sounds really big, it sounds really full, full of life. It's my favorite part of the song by far, and not just because of the stupid little run that I jammed in here at the last second. <laughs> To this day, I don't know if I actually nailed that or if it's just all the synths that's helping. Let's let's see how cleanly I actually play it. Pretty messy. Pretty pretty messy. I also give myself plenty of help. it. Overall, I'm really happy with this song. It's It was the first song that I started when working on this release, and it might have been the last one I finished. This song feels the most connected to the previous Kinglet material. This release's version of Woodpecker, in a way. Um, just kind of the fast, arpeggiated, sort of sweeping stuff. It feels a little bit more grown up than Woodpecker, I think. I think that's about it. If there's anything else that I didn't cover that you're curious about, definitely shoot me a message. There's also free tabs for this song on my website. So, you know, if you get the inkling to do some arpeggios and some weird sweeps, then, you know, that's available to you. It means a lot that you'd be into the music enough to watch a video like this. So, you know, thank you. Until next time, see you and good riddance.